Okay, I'm John Lennig with Housemaster. I service the uh, Northwest region of New Jersey. And today we're gonna show you a typical bathroom inspection. First, I go to the sink, check the stopper, make sure it's functional. And then we're gonna run some water here. I usually pull the stopper, I fill the sink, I check the cold flow and the hot flow against each other. So you look at the hot, you look at the cold. They should be consistent. If you have a, a reduced flow on the hot, that's usually a symptom of a problem. Um, you know, it could be anywhere. It could be in the piping, could be in a hot water heater or whatever. But it is an indication that something else is going on. So I typically would fill this sink all the way until it goes through the overflow. And then uh, once it's going through the overflow, and uh, you know, I check under here, make sure that it doesn't just overflow under the, to the cabinet. But um, we're going to make sure that the, uh, the water overflow allows water to drain. And we're going to just turn the water off and let it sit in there for a while. Um, I'll check underneath here to make sure everything is dry. It's simplest just to run your hand along everything. You'll know if you feel anything wet. I take my flashlight. I give a visual. I'm going to look for any kind of piping. Now you can see there's a lot of uh, obstructions in here. We're not going to remove everything from underneath the sink. We're going to look around it as best we can and um, note anything that's visible. So everything looks good here. Uh, we do have a couple of outlets in the bathroom here and uh, we always make sure that there's GFCI protection which is a ground fault circuit interrupter and uh, we have a tester where we just simply check to make sure it does trip. Okay, that one tripped just fine. And then uh, over here, this one trips. And then uh, sometimes I'll check with the test button to make sure that the um, operation that the uh, homeowner would do also works. So at this point, we're just going to scope our eyes across the ceiling, make sure there's no stains, no cracks, and we're going to note just about anything we see. Uh, check the flooring. The flooring is tile here and sometimes there's rugs. What we'll do is we'll move the rug aside and take a look underneath there. Make sure they're not hiding anything. Uh, a lot of times right in front of the sink or right in front of the toilet, you're going to have some water damage and it could be uh, covered by the carpet. So we actually want to peek under there and make sure that everything looks good. Okay, we're going to evaluate the toilet. Just check it. Make sure it's very important that the toilet is tight to the floor. We uh, actually push on it, make sure it doesn't move. There's a wax ring seal that is uh, sealing between the waistline and the toilet. And that's the only thing that keeps g g vapors from coming, uh, sewer waste gases from coming into the bathroom area. So it's very important that this toilet not only is tight, but stays tight. If it ever starts to move, we want to, we question whether that seal is still good. Uh, I visually ev evaluate around the base, make sure there's no sign of leakage, make sure there's no cracking in the porcelain anywhere. And then we uh, pull in the tank. Now, I notice on this tank, it moves a little bit. Um, tanks should be well secured to the base. So those two screws that anchor it should be tightened down so that it doesn't move like this. What happens frequently is if it moves around too much, it'll start leaking below the tank and dripping onto the floor. We also want to make sure that we're getting a good clean flush. And of course, the only way to do that is just to take a look at it. Um, when I depress the handle, I shouldn't have to hold it down. I should be able to just to hit it. We had a good, uh, good clean flush there and everything appears to be okay as far as that goes. Okay, then we're going to move to the shower. Uh, we want to make sure if there's an enclosure that everything operates properly. Uh, check for caulking and seals. Make sure everything's sealed up properly. I'm actually going to go in and reach in. This can be very challenging sometimes with the shower not getting all wet, but I'm going to reach in there, turn the water on. Once again, like we did with the sink, we're going to check and make sure the hot is hot, cold is cold. Make sure it's not plumbed in properly and reversed. This shower happens to have a tile floor, and when you have a tile floor, you're going to have a shower pan. Now, you can't see the shower pan. The shower pan is actually below the tile, and it should extend up along the wall. And we have a little device here that we can actually place over the drain, and we turn on the shower and just let it run. As the water runs, this, has, this uh, device will actually dam up the water, allow it to come up to this level, which is an acceptable height that the shower pan should allow the water to be and not leak. So it's a simple test. You put it on there, you fill it up, let the water run, and then we'd have to go down below and see if there's any stains on the ceiling. 
So bathrooms all need to have good ventilation. And this bathroom actually has a combination light fan assembly. Uh, we will always check those, make sure that they come on, make sure that they move air. And then uh, it's very important that they don't discharge into an attic space or into the wall. So we'll actually look for a discharge vent on the outside of the house. So that concludes our evaluation of the bathroom.